So let me tell you about something very disturbing that happened on YouTube and it is the FTX. FTX was a exchange. Uh, if you don't really read the news very much, it was the second largest crypto exchange and it went to zero. Now FTX had a US company, FTX.US, that a lot of people promoted. On my other channel, I go into more detail because I think it's really important to hold these people accountable for promoting, a, being paid to promote a scam to their audience. And they actually know because the amount that they get paid depends on how many people sign up with their affiliate link. So they know exactly how many people they're signing up. They don't know, I mean, they get a monthly email or a weekly email. Hey, you signed up this many people. We're going to pay you out this much more as a bonus. So the same people who would make, you know, think that promoting an online casino is very evil, making many, many videos about that. Um, you might be like, who am I talking about? I'm talking about uh, Graham Stefan, Meet Kevin, Minority Mindset, Andre Janke, and then I'm talking about the guys defending them like Spencer Cornelia. They're all part of the same creators agency, and they have a website with all of them on it. Um, and I've seen that website, the website's been documented. So it's kind of interesting that they all decided to so they went from creators who were talking about, you know, rental properties, how to fix up your rental property, how to deal with a tenant, to crypto, baby. <laughs> so they went from like actually giving financial advice. One of them, Andre Junkie, I think is a magician or something. He went from like showing you magic tricks, right? To like doing magic tricks with a credit card, a Bitcoin credit card with free Bitcoins. I'm not kidding. This actually is a video about this. And right now in the financial YouTube, each of these guys have a million plus subscribers and they are financial, not financial advice type of people. This is why I do not listen to influencers, right? Because they always have something to grind. Um, I think in this case, a lot of people want me to address the alpha investment situation. I think he's doing what's in his best interest but that may not be in my best interest. It may not be in your best interest. Now, am I accusing him of promoting a crypto scam? No. Uh, am I saying that he is as bad as Graham Stefan or me, Kevin, or Minority Mindset, which all, again, all these guys are part of a creator group that is very strong and they will attack anyone who, you know, makes a video of their name on it. No, but I do think that I wish more people would advertise this idea of think for yourself. Like if somebody is telling you about this product, either good or bad, you, you as a human being need to do your own due diligence. You have to do, you, you can't be lazy about this. And I think this is what happened with the FTX. It was clearly a Ponzi scheme. Anyone could see a mile away. The uh, guy, Sam Bankman Freed, he, supposedly he drove so the influencers went to meet him and they were so impressed he drove a used toyota corolla what they failed to mention in their videos is he also lived in a 35 million dollar mansion in the bahamas which is the largest home in the bahamas it was almost like a cult like and they made him seem like a god like and this is a problem i feel like in crypto and even in magic is some people they are uh, promoted almost like a god and they can't do anything wrong everything they say is right and nobody questions even basic concepts of the gay guys uh is this real <laughs> this is a scam so i don't you know i prior to recently i don't even watch alpha investments videos i don't watch anyone in mtg's finances videos uh occasionally i'll go on the reddit to see if there's any good amazon deals but that's it if you truly want to deal with this on a higher level, you have to make your own decisions because you have to live with it. At the end of the day, if you decide to buy this War of the Spark product and you think it's gonna go up and you can't sell it, I'd much rather know, hey, that was my decision. You know, I didn't listen to anyone or if I did listen to somebody, I already, I already did my own research. I came to this conclusion by myself, you know, with the due diligence I could put into it. And yeah, I lost money because you know, right now, a lot of people are losing money. Don't let that, don't misunderstand what I'm saying, okay? 
the market is down. Crypto is way down, baby, right? And when people tell you, hey, buy some crypto, you're going to be rich the next day. You're, the, the worst case scenario I feel like is the, if you work at McDonald's, you're doing a nine to five shift, you're, and you have some money, you know, I would just say, hey, go to the movies with your friend, go play FNM Magic $5, do whatever, it, do whatever you can do, right? The last thing I would want somebody with a very little sum of money to do is put it into something they don't understand. Is that magic card investment? Like, you might love magic cards, but if you want to actually treat it as an investment, it's really hard. You think the stock market is hard? No, no. I, I play in the stock market every day, but it, it goes up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. I buy Chinese stock for God's sake. You know, I know risk. This is hard. Like if it was that easy and you have all these magic nerds who want to do it, then why aren't any of them millionaires? Like why are like why is everyone still so poor in the Magic the Gathering community? For generally speaking. Right? If this set was a card game and everyone playing the card game was making so much money from it, then you expect the you know community, some of them not even have jobs, they just do magic as an investment. It's not an investment. Okay? It would be ludicrous for people You should never have more than, in my opinion, my humble opinion, you should never have more than 10% into what you would call alternative investments, which would include magic cards, Pokemon cards, any cards. It would also include crypto. I put crypto in alternative investment because if your portfolio, let's say it's a million dollars and you lose 100,000 of the dollars, hey, you still have 900,000 left. You can make that up, you know, with some good stock trades and so on, you know, some dividends. Um, yeah, as, as more of these influencers are coming out and they've been paid a bag and we're going to talk about the, uh, Mr. Sports Card Investor very soon, who's promoting whatnot. And, um, what's the other guy? Card Collector too. I mean, there's a bunch of them, but like when you see people spending $50,000 at the Dallas card show and it's dead, right? There's nobody else at the end of the video. There's nobody who wants to spend any type of money at these shows. And then you hear that it's sponsored by whatnot. You have to understand that money isn't their money. It's not Jeff Wilson's money that he's spending. It's whatnot's money. And I don't see no sponsored videos, you know, and then they go on whatnot. I actually went online and they go on whatnot and they advertise it and they try to sell these singles and whatnot. It's um, one of the reasons that I will never use whatnot. I like whatnot. I watch whatnot. I think it's an interesting idea, but I will never, I will never sell on whatnot because I don't believe this is a type of marketing you should be doing. As somebody who owns a marketing agency, I am very vehemently against this type of marketing because it will leave a lot of people, um, like the FTX situation, a lot of people don't really understand that it's not Jeff Wilson's. When you use marketing and you use it in this, and I believe this is a deceptive way, uh, the goal is to trick people. Uh, the goal is to trick people into thinking, oh, the sports card market is alive and well. What did they say? The hobby is alive. The hobby's booming. No, it's not. It's not. Like how, like you go to Dow Sports Con, you look at these vlogs and A, like Sasha T doesn't even make his one week of podcasts. He used to do one podcast a week and now he hasn't made one in months. So people are leaving the hobby who were very integral in the hype of the hobby. Now the hype is down, down. They're no longer interested in the hobby. So Sasha T, one of the biggest hype men in sports cards is gonna leave the hobby, right? And he's no longer even making videos anymore at all. That should be a good indication that the hobby is not alive and well, no matter how many times they scream and shout, because obviously whatnot wants you to believe that things are going really well, but it's not. My gosh.